Now that we understand the basics of working with the user interface, I want to go ahead and talk about navigating our documents because it's very, very important. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we can do this, and I want to talk about the advantages of each when we're talking about it. Before I get to that, though, I want to talk a bit about the concept of navigating because it's very different from the concept of transforming. When we do transformations, we're actually making permanent changes to the document. When we're doing navigation, we're doing temporary changes that only affect our view of the document. You can think about it like working with a sheet of paper on top of a table. You can move that sheet of paper around, and you can even move your eyes closer or further away from that sheet of paper, but you're not actually changing the sheet of paper or the contents of it. And navigation works in a very, very similar way. So don't get confused between transformations and navigations. Now that said, the first thing that we want to understand about working with our navigation is going to be over here under the view menu. So you can see we have a number of options here for zooming. You can see we have zoom in, which is the plus key. We have zoom out, which is the minus key. Zoom to 100%, which is the zero key. And fit to screen, which is the period key. Now we can change our own keyboard shortcuts at various different points in time, but for right now, these are the defaults that you're going to see as well. Now over here, we have a lot of the same options for the zoom right here on the navigator. So you can see that we have a zoom out, which if I click this, it's going to allow me to go in 10% increments. And if I click the plus, we're going to be going into a zoom in in 10% increments. And then we have the ability here to zoom to 100%, and we have the ability to fit to screen. So all the same commands just right here on the navigator. We also have over here a slider, so we can go ahead and scroll and zoom in or out. And you can see this takes us to an arbitrary percentage. We could also type in a specific percentage if we wanted one. And then down here, we also have the ability to rotate. So we can rotate counterclockwise, we can rotate clockwise, and we can also use a slider to just go ahead and do this to an arbitrary, as well as type in a value that we want, and then reset that rotation back to zero degrees. Now I'm gonna come over here to the pencil tool, and I'm gonna go ahead and use the 2H pencil with a color of black, and I'm gonna draw an arrow because I wanna go ahead and show you a situation where you might not wanna use a navigator and then a situation where you might want to use the navigator. So the first situation, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom way, way in, something like 300%. Now at this zoom, you're gonna see in the navigator, I get this little frame. This frame is telling me that I can just go ahead and click and drag it, and this will be the area that I'm looking at in my document. So if I wanted to go ahead and work over in this area, right, and then I said, I really want to go over here and work in this area now, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you can see how quick that was with the navigator. So the navigator has some definite advantages when it comes to working in highly zoomed in views like what we have here. However, there are times when we don't want to use the navigator or we can't use the navigator. A good example of that would be when I hit the tab key. This is going to get rid of my user interface, including the navigator, and now I can't see the navigator. I'm still able to use some keyboard shortcuts to do all the same things that I would do with the navigator. For instance, I'm able to come over here and hold down the Z key, and then I can go ahead and click to either left or right to zoom in or zoom out like so. And then I can also hold down the R key, and that will allow me to rotate to an arbitrary angle, just like so. And I'm also able to use the space bar, and this will allow me to pan the document. But you can see that I have to do a lot of dragging in order to find the specific area that I'm looking for, and this is very wasteful when you're working. So this is where the navigator would come in handy. So if I come back over here and I hit tab, you can see exactly where you are in a document, and you can go right to the spot that you want to go to and then be able to work. So like I said, there's times when you want to use the keyboard shortcuts of Z, R, and spacebar to navigate, and there's times when you might want to use the navigator, particularly when you're in these greatly zoomed in views where you're doing tight details or something like that. Now I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to reset this back to fit to screen, which is going to take it back to the appropriate zoom to fit it in screen and also set our rotation angle back to 0%. I want to point out to you one final option we have over here, which is going to be flip. And I use this all the time. Now, the idea of flip is that we're basically just going to be flipping the document as if we're viewing it in a mirror. And this is going to allow us to see mistakes that we wouldn't be able to see otherwise in our drawings or paintings. And so this is a really great way of checking your artwork periodically to make sure that you're not letting mistakes creep in that you're not able to see because you're able to see by flipping it from a new point of view. And again, this is not something that's actually a transformation. This is just a temporary view. You're not making any change to the pixels. There's no danger in doing any of these things. You can do them all to your heart's content because they're only going to be something that is a temporary view of the document. The second that you close the document and reopen it again, all that goes away. 
So like I said, a very different thing from transformations, which is something that we'll get into at a later point in time.